36 holes on the old course was what lay ahead of the 51 golfers to make the cut at this year's Lynx Trophy. Conditions were bright, although chilly, as our golfers headed out looking for an early move up the leaderboard, and one golfer hoping for a repeat of his 5-under front nine on round two was Australian Travis Smith. I knew the back nine was going to be tough into the breeze, so I just thought, you know, just go for everything on the front nine, and um, just so be it. I hit really close shots sort of all day, and just, yeah, hold, hold some putts in the front nine, so got off to a great start, which is what I needed. And what prompted the journey halfway around the world to take part in this year's tournament? It's a highly renowned amateur golf tournament and um, I'm over here for the summer to play. Um, last week I played the Scottish Stroke play, now this, and then British Amateur. So yeah, I'm enjoying the Lynx golf. I've been playing well, so it's, uh, it's been a good trip so far. Smith wouldn't repeat his D2 form though. A third round, three over 75, saw him fall out of contention. He would finish the tournament tied for 15th place. South Africa's Jovan Rebula was just three shots off the lead at the halfway mark. Another golfer obviously relishing his trip to the home of golf. This is my first time um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's awesome. Such a cool place to be at the home of golf. Um, I think this place is really awesome with all the tradition and everything. It just makes it so special and I'm really enjoying it thoroughly. Impressive scoring so far from Jovan, who's obviously used to slightly different conditions back home. The wind here is a major factor. I mean, if the wind picks up, it's going to be a little bit, the scoring is going to be a little bit high. I'm actually hoping for the wind a little bit. Uh, but, uh, yeah, looking forward to today, keeping a same game plan as always, just playing aggressive and, uh, yeah, just looking forward to those main things just to go out and enjoy it. Jovan also struggled with his third round, being three over par and falling down the leaderboard, finishing tied for 15th. You don't have to travel halfway around the world, though, to appreciate the links here at St Andrews. Lytham Trophy winner Alfie Plant made the journey from Kent. So what are his thoughts on this week's venue? It's the best place, isn't it, to be, I think. You know, the atmosphere around here is great. Um, it's got a very uh, strong field this week as well. If you're in contention, you've just got to give it your all now, really. You know, you might have to take a little bit more risks off the tees or a little bit of a, a risk into the pins to get a little bit closer. Um, I'm four behind, so I've got to take a few more risks than I'd like, but... Um, yeah, that's why we play golf, really, to challenge yourself. Things didn't go the Englishman's way, though, as he finished the tournament well back on four over par. So who was looking likely to win this year's Lynx Trophy? Well, first, let's spare a thought for Kim Koivu from Finland. He started the day just one shot off the lead, but unfortunately had a day to forget on the old course. A morning 79 was followed by a 75 in the afternoon, moving him well out of contention. However, there aren't many golfers who tame the infamous road hole 17th with a birdie. So Kim Koivu from Finland, take a bow and hopefully a nice memory away from the home of golf. Conor O'Rourke was leader after 36 holes by a single shot and made a good start to his third round. Three birdies in his opening five holes had him at 13 under for the tournament. He missed the green here at seven, but a nice recovery shot saved his par and kept him at that score. Just one shot back from corner at the halfway mark was Sandy Scott. A nice approach here from Sandy on the ninth, but he would have to settle for a par. Two under for his front nine had him at 10 under for the tournament. Once again, Connor had missed the green on the ninth, and after a bogey at 8 needed this putt to drop for par to keep a slender one shot lead as the final pair headed on to the back nine. So could anyone else in the field mount a challenge to our leader from Ireland? Well Craig Howie from Peebles was certainly trying. A nice approach here on the par 4 7th, setting up a birdie opportunity. This putt here was one of five birdies that he carded in his round, but a costly nine on the par 5 14th sent him back from 9 under to 5 under. He finished the tournament at minus six just inside the top ten. Jamie Savage was also one of a number of Scottish players close to the leaders. Missing the green here at 11, an impressive shot up the hill, allowing him to make par. He would head into the final round at six under par. Liam Johnston from Dumfries started the day just three shots off the lead, but 36 holes in level par on the final day gave him eighth place for this year's tournament. Hidden behind the undulations just off the fairway there 
was codder Callum Fife. His joint best round of 67 on day 2 had seen him climb the leaderboard, and he continued his ascent in round 3. A nice approach here at 15 would lead to a birdie 3, moving him to 7 under par for the tournament. It was almost followed by another one here on 16, but the putt just didn't drop. A good week's work though for Callum. His final round 69 saw him finish tied for 4th at the end of the day's play. Another Scot, Ewan Ferguson, has had the chance to play some Challenge Tour events this season, and the experience seems to be helping his game. Here he puts his approach at the ninth close, but he had to settle for a par, missing his birdie putt. No such problems as he headed down 18 though. A big drive over the road into the wind. He flopped up his approach. And look how close this lands. A birdie here saw him head into the final round, nine under par and breathing down the necks of the leaders. Those leaders were the same as at the start of round three. In the final group out, just behind Ewan, the lead had changed hands though. Sandy Scott was now 10 under as he hit his approach to the iconic 18th green, and a par here would see him tee off in his final round on that score. One shot back now was O'Rourke. That was until this lengthy birdie putt dropped. Connor and Sandy locked at 10 under, Ferguson just one shot back. So all to play for as we headed into the afternoon. Sandy Scott though made an unfortunate start to his final round, a double bogey 6 at the first, leaving him with ground to catch up. He did birdie the 4th to go back to 9 under, but Conor O'Rourke had this eagle putt here on 5 to go to minus 14. A birdie it was, now 4 clear of Scott. Up on 6, Ewan Ferguson put this approach close enough to guarantee a birdie. He was now 10 under par. Coming from way back in the field was Frenchman Victor Verrier. He was only 4 under par as he headed into the afternoon, but this birdie putt dropped on 18 for a final round 67. He was the clubhouse leader at 9 under par. Jamie Savage was putting for his second birdie of the afternoon here on 6. Impressive stuff as he then birdied 3 of the next 4 holes to move to 11 under for the tournament. However, two bogeys coming down the home stretch would see him finish at 9 under par, tied for 4th alongside Frenchman Victor Verdier and fellow Codder club member Callum Fife. Back in the final group, Sandy Scott was trying hard to close the gap on his playing partner O'Rourke. He didn't manage to hold this birdie putt here on 6, but he would get back to 11 under par after birdies on the 9th and the 10th. That meant that when O'Rourke missed this long par putt on 11, he was now only one shot ahead. Up on 16, Ewan Ferguson was in need of a strong finish, having dropped to 8 under par. A birdie here on 16 would help the cause though, after a tidy approach. Back onto the long par 5 14th, and O'Rourke had a birdie putt to get him back to 13 under. A real opportunity with Scott facing a putt not much shorter to save his par. It has to be said that both golfers seem to stay fairly unfazed by the prospect of victory. And Scott was almost nonchalant in dispatching this putt for par to stay alongside O'Rourke at 12 under. And to be fair to O'Rourke, he didn't bat an eyelid when that putt went in. Stood up on the next tee, 15, hit a nice drive straight down the middle, and then produced this with a 9 iron. Coming down and nestling right up next to the hole, very nearly dropping for an eagle 2, but a tap in birdie 3, his lead was won once again. It seemed certain that the winner would come from this final group now, but as everybody knows in the old course anything can happen, especially at the 17th. Ewan Ferguson had managed a par there, and here up in 18 sank an impressive birdie putt for a grandstand finish to be the new clubhouse leader, posting a score at 10 under par and making sure whoever won this year's St Andrews Lynx trophy was going to earn it. 
We didn't have to wait till 17 for that mistake. O'Rourke with a bogey at 16 and then playing his approach over the green onto the path at the infamous road hole 17th. But even with the tournament at stake, O'Rourke stayed calm enough to flop up a nice chip shot a few feet away from the flag. Perhaps he felt relaxed knowing that Sandy Scott was also on a spot of bother into the infamous road hole bunker and with the flag cut so close to it, well you couldn't really do much better than that. Sandy Scott giving himself a great chance to make par and stay at 12 under, but the putt stayed out. That meant that Conor O'Rourke had this par putt for a one-shot lead as they headed on to the 72nd hole and one of the most iconic views in the world of sport. A nice solid drive from both golfers and O'Rourke just looking for the middle of the green here to put the pressure onto Scott. Nicely over the flag, a bit of check back. And it was over to Sandy Scott now to see what he could do. It looked like a birdie would be essential. The crowd's gathering. Now we could see O'Rourke's ball onto the green. And to be fair to Sandy Scott, he looked to try and get inside that, but the ball just running on, releasing away from the hole and leaving a tricky downhill putt. Well, could we see another one go in after Ewan Ferguson's efforts in the group ahead? Sandy Scott knew this had to drop really to have any chance of taking the tournament to a playoff. And to be fair, that was a brave attempt. Over to Conor O'Rourke now. Two putts for the tournament. A great effort from Sandy Scott. One round on the new course, three on the old course and an 11 under par total. So Conor O'Rourke, two putts to be the 2016 St Andrews Lynx Trophy champion and he would take both putts quite right too. He had kept his composure remarkably well coming down the home stretch after what had been a topsy-turvy day on the course. The lead changing hands just a couple of times out there. But the Irishman kept his head well, played some quality golf and proved a worthy winner. Yeah, it was a bit of a crazy round today because I got off to a really solid start, it was three under through nine, hadn't missed any shots. And then Sandy, who played great all day, he made three birdies in four holes and I got a harsh break on 11 to make bogey, so it was a massive swing. Where I was four ahead of him, we were all square and it was really game on for the last and anything can happen on the way and the holes are tough, everyone knows that. So um, the shot on 15, I was standing in the fairway, I kind of knew I needed to do something and he looked like he did it in quite close. So. Perfect yardage for 9 iron, just almost held, it was just stone dead, so nice one to tap in. A fantastic victory for the Irishman on his first visit to St Andrews. From Ireland, Conor O'Rourke. Well deserved applause from the crowd gathered there for the presentation. So what does the win mean to our champion? Unbelievable, first big win, first proper win anywhere and what a place to do it, like absolutely incredible place to home of golf, couldn't be happier. Congratulations to Conor O'Rourke from Ireland, winner of the 2016 St Andrews Lynx Trophy.